Hey everyone, Eric Grotebois, Five Minutes with Eric. This is actually five minutes. And I just did a one minute video where I'm talking about a client who calls me up and he's got a business. Now let's dig a little bit deeper. So he's got a business, it's a Delaware LLC set up to do business in Nevada. And the partners live in California, Florida, and Oregon, right? Literally all the corners of the United States. And he comes to me because he's got a problem. Uh, unfortunately, not enough people come to me before they have a problem. And so he says, you know, Eric, I'm having a really hard time. I don't really trust my partners anymore. Let's pause right there. That is ultimately, in my opinion, the beginning and the end of the whole discussion. But we'll dig back in and then we'll come back around to that. So I ask him, I'm like, okay, do you have a written agreement with your partners? Because you, you apparently, you know, we got we to gotta do some dispute resolution now. And he says, no, no, we never really did anything. And I said, okay, well, what are your ownership interests? He goes, well, we're one third, one third, one third. There's three partners. And I said, okay, so you guys are all owners. You're equal. I said, are you all managers, right? Because those are the people designated to run an LLC. He goes, yeah, each of us is a manager. And I said, okay, is it managers? And have you guys ever talked about you guys are each autonomous and you can go out into the world and do your own thing on behalf of the company? Or are you, do you have to vote either majority two out of three or unanimous, all of you have to agree. He goes, you know, we've never really talked about it. And just as an aside, normally what we do, especially when we're drafting a good operating agreement, is we're gonna A, define how the managers work, either independently, pursuant to votes, et cetera, and then B, we're gonna usually divide up the world into day-to-day -day and outside of the ordinary course of business. So day-to-day -day might be entering into another transaction, whereas outside of the ordinary course of business might be getting a $400,000 SBA loan. So my client is, he tells me, he says, I'm going through the bank records and I see a $400,000 deposit from the SBA. And then almost the next day it goes out to some random account. And when I confronted one of my partners, he at first said, oh, well, don't worry about it. That was something personal. And my client says, well, hold on a second. How is it personal if it's the small business association, the, the administration, SBA? So then he's like, well, yeah, actually it's, a, it's an SBA loan on behalf of the company, which by the way, my client's like, what? You went out there and I've never heard of the SBA giving loans to especially random LLCs without getting personal guarantees on the owners. I've just never heard of it. Maybe they do it. It'd be news to me. I asked the client to try and get me some documentation so that I can see whether he's on the hook because then that raises some really interesting issues because you can't be bound by a personal guarantee unless you actually sign it yourself. So if there is one, maybe someone signed it on his behalf. Maybe it's a forgery um, in any case. But I would definitely say that getting an SBA loan is outside of the ordinary course of business. It's not something you do every day. You don't every day go get a giant loan, almost half a million dollars. Okay, so anyways, we go back and he says, again, I've got all these misgivings. I've got all these problems with my partners. We don't have anything in writing, so we're going to have to end up relying on the Delaware LLC statute. What do I do? And I said, well, listen, let's first start with this. And remember what an LLC is. It's a type of business that's not that old. It's about 50 years old. And it was created by marrying the concepts of a partnership with the concepts of a corporation. So let's talk about those. So the concepts of a corporation, the main one is limited liability. What that means is that the investors, the owners, all that they put at risk is what they put into the company. So if the business burns down and they lose all their money, all they're gonna lose is what's in the business. And the creditors of the business can't then pursue the owners individually. If I own shares in a publicly traded corporation, me, little old Eric, and that company goes out of business, the creditors aren't gonna come after me because of limited liability. Now, on the other side, partnership, the whole idea of a partnership and under partnership law is fiduciary duties, meaning that we owe a duty to each other. And the easiest way that I like to think about it is it's a marriage, all right? So you shouldn't be cheating on each other. You shouldn't be lying to each other. You shouldn't have secret bank accounts, right? And, and essentially, if you were married and you found out that your spouse was cheating on you, or you found out that they had secret bank accounts and they're taking out big loans without telling you, that would lead to problems, right? Just like it would in a marriage, it would lead to a problem in a partnership. And so in the, in the partnership, we've got the fiduciary duties of duty of care and duty of loyalty. So combine those together, limited liability, fiduciary duties. I said to my client, if you can't trust them, then you have to answer a question for yourself. Can you live with it and stay in this unhappy marriage or should we get out? All right, guys, thanks a lot. Five minutes with Eric.